welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Some more details have been provided as to how the interventions to end load shedding will be implemented as power cuts resume this week. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss areas of clarity and those areas that are still uncertain. Hi Terence. Hi Simone. On the ESCOM front, there has been some further clarity on what areas will be prioritised. Yes, you know, the, the crisis committee that the president set up with seven ministers uh, sort of had a, a communication this week and gave some clarity, particularly Minister Pravin Gordon, around how Eskom will be responding to this, these interventions that were announced on the 25th of July by the president. And basically, there's a few levers that Eskom are going to try to pull. Firstly, the big focus will be around trying to recover the energy availability factor. But we know that there's a, an, there's a neglected plant that's underperforming and they need time and space to maintain, which is why they say they need that, that additional megawatts in the system to give them the headroom to do that and to raise the energy availability factor. But they have a fairly focused approach, I think, uh, to the power station fleet. They're really looking at the, the big, more u newer units uh, within their fleet and trying to really focus the maintenance attention on six power stations. So we've heard it's, it's Kendall, Majuba, Tatuka, Kusile, Duva, and Matla. And they're going to be focusing maintenance attention, priority maintenance attention there. And there they needed some exemptions or room to maneuver from the National Treasury in terms of exemptions from the PFMA, which they seem to be receiving. Uh, and that will allow them to get spares uh, in place to do the maintenance and to procure that uh, and to also possibly expand the budget. And interestingly, the National Treasury said they, they, they are willing, uh, the Minister Inokon Gorgondwana, to maybe give a little bit more money into Eskom's maintenance. They've got $8 billion, uh, yearly that they spend on the generation fleet. And there was a suggestion that maybe $2 billion more could be made available, which would be important. But it's really about the upfront planning, getting the spares in place. Those are all things that need to happen for maintenance at these power stations to be more effective than it's been in the past, as well as to contract over a longer period with original equipment manufacturers. So that's an important first thrust. Then to give them some immediate headroom, they, they're looking at uh, getting an exemption from the DMRE to buy 1,600 megawatts of capacity that's surplus capacity that could be available in the system, either from renewables, RPPs, or from, the, uh, from industry. We don't know whether that full allocation will be taken up, but it looks like what they'll do is they'll try and see what's available from the renewables, RPPs. We know that some electricity gets curtailed from these because they just meet their power purchase agreement commitments and they can't do more than that. This will give them the, the, the opportunity to do a bit more and buy that you know, power and enter it, allow it to go into the grid rather than be curtailed. As well as we know there's capacity across industry that maybe could be injected into the electricity system. We know they already do buy from some of these uh, players, but there was a short-term power purchase agreement program that lapsed and was never renewed. And we imagine there's going to be a standard offer made to anyone that has electricity available. And then there's a third leg and that leg is really about whether there's any capacity in the region that Eskom could get immediately. So Botswana has been mentioned and uh, the Botswana Power Corporation has indicated there may be some capacity available, but it won't be during peak period. They, they need it. Uh, but there might be over the weekends, which would be quite important for replenishing our pumped storage scheme. We know that we often don't have enough energy in the system to do that. And we start the week, therefore, on the back foot. And also to buy it maybe cheaper than what we would be uh, if we were burning diesel at the open cycle gas turbines. So there's that opportunity. There's a possible suggestion of Zambia, but there hasn't been much progress, it seems, yet there. And then there's 150 megawatts, it seems, on the cards, potentially, of gas to power from Mozambique. We know many, many years ago we had a, an emergency scheme with Agreco that was set up um, on the border of Mozambique, and we bought the electricity there. It's not clear whether this is existing capacity that we will then divert into South Africa rather than uh, elsewhere, uh, maybe at a better tariff, I'm not sure. But there is this 150 megawatts supposedly available. We could see that raised some skittishness in the region immediately. 
because Zimbabwe's contracts are coming up and they are nervous that they're going to, to be displaced by South Africa. So it's not, a, it's not necessary that we'll definitely get all these megawatts. But there's this 1,600 domestic window that's an opportunity for Eskom to mop up anything that's available, which it would be important. And then this uh, potential for regional, tr uh, uh, regional imports as well uh, that we're going to be looking at. There's still some uncertainty on the procurement side of things. Yes, when the uh, big window 6 was expanded from 2,600 megawatts to 5,200 megawatts, so doubled up, there was some unclarity as to whether that could happen within the time frame of 11th of August was the, uh, the deadline for bid submissions. That has been clarified. They have extended that deadline to the 22nd of September to give more opportunity for, for bidders to take advantage of this bigger allocation. But we still haven't seen any progress out of bid window 5. The first projects, I think 14, were supposed to close before the end of July. We're now into August. We haven't heard anything. And we uh, then the next deadline, so it was a staggered two-stage process around closure, financial close for the balance of the 25 projects would be uh, at the end of September. So we really need clarity. What we heard in the plan is that there was greater pragmatism, especially around solar PV panel local content. Uh, but we still need some clarity as to whether those 25 projects, which I think are baked in, in terms of ESKIM's planning, in terms of the system operators planning, in terms of trying to get more capacity into the grid, that, that hasn't happened yet. We also haven't had firm dates yet for the, the battery storage projects. We know that ESKIM is moving ahead with the first phase of their procurement of battery storage, which is very important. And what I didn't mention as part of the ESKIM scheme is that there's also a potential for storage, gas and battery storage uh, at the repurposed power stations that seem to be coming into the, the Eskom mix. But, you know, we haven't got the, the 513 megawatts of uh, battery storage that's in the RP outside of Eskom. We need to know when that's going to be procured because that's going to be very important as we have more renewable electricity coming into the, the network. We need the flexible generators, or uh, in this case, battery storage, which is also a a consumer of power, but uh, to be able to respond to the gaps that might be left if there's a cloud out or if it's night time in the case of solar. So that's, uh, that's important. We also don't know the dates for the peaking power. That's also allocated in the integrated resource plan. That hasn't been announced yet. Now, whether that will be gas or more diesel, we know that Eskom's been progressing a project uh, at Richards Bay. Does that fall under that at gas to power project? Does that fall under that allocation or is that something different. So there's a lot of uh, unclarity. Does the RPP office have to get involved in mopping up, for instance, the, the, the extra, extra surplus that might be available from renewables, RPPs? So I think we need to get some of this clarity sooner rather than later. Uh, also clarity on the next bid window for the renewables program. So on the procurement side, I think we need an announcement uh, from either the minister or from the RPP office to give us some greater certainty on timelines and allocations. And then oh, sort of wrapping this, we need a ministerial determination that ensures that all the uh, available capacity that is allocated for in the integrated resource 2019, which takes us to 2030, is indeed available for, for procurement. So there's a few uh, loose ends, a number of loose ends, and I think we need some clarity still. Clear communication and flexibility are likely to be needed as the new energy system is implemented. Yeah, a, a sort of a unity of message is important. Clear communication. And we did see that with the first crisis committee with the seven ministers reporting earlier this week. They seem to be on the same page, even though that we know there's been difference of opinions around what should be in the plan. So there, there seems to, that's a good start, but it's going to get difficult as things maybe don't go as, as planned or as advertised and that unity of message is still going to be important but they're also going to need to be flexible if something's really not going to happen in the time frames that's envisaged to really end load shedding in this 24 to 36 month period then they need to explain to the public that they've changed tack and they need to be uh, open about it and transparent right the way through so I think we've had a good start uh, but we need consistent communication out of that national crisis committee 
a unified message and also when things change, which they possibly will have to because not everything is going to happen as per uh, the plan on paper, I think we need to be told and told early. The threat of load shedding persists and will continue to do so for some time. Yes, I mean, it's just a week after the president's announcement, we know that ahead of that we had this very intense period of June and July of high levels of load shedding daily up to stage four. And then a week later, we're back into sort of regular rotational cuts at quite intense levels, stage, uh, uh, stage four again. So it's, it's really, uh, we're in this difficult phase. We're not going to get out of it immediately. There are these plans, but it's all about now implementing the plans and implementing it diligently. We know Eskom is planning to bring in some additional skills uh, to help them at the power station, but that has to be managed very well and very sensitively because um, we see that solidarity is given to 300 names, for instance. It's important that we have these skills in the mix, but you know, you have incumbents that are on a career path. Uh, you have to make sure that this is very, very sensitively managed so that there isn't resistance that built up to this plan immediately. So yes, we all know it needs, it needs to be all hands on deck and we need to bring in the skills and the, especially the experience. I think there are the skills in Eskom, but there is a lack of experience at some of the power stations. But this has to be really well managed so that we get through uh, raising the, the availability from the Eskom fleet as soon as possible without any internal resistance. We saw when there was that, that strike, that wildcat strike, and there was a period where, where workers couldn't get to the, or managers and workers couldn't get to the power station, how bad it can get um, in, 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 in the, with load shedding. So we really need uh, people behind the plan. So it's going to be important to, one, understand there are going to be bouts of load shedding. There might be bouts of intense load shedding, and again, it's about communicating that clearly but also back at the ranch, you know, making sure that people are, are all on side, uh, especially at Eskom, behind this plan and getting the, the fleet operating at a, at a better level. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.